Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today, I'm doing a full wave review of the LEGO Ninjago Island sets, no pun intended. Uh, thanks a lot to the LEGO group for sending these sets over to us to do a review. We really do appreciate the support. We've got the Catamaran Sea Battle, the Keeper's Village, Jungle Dragon, Lloyd's Jungle Chopper, and Jay's Electro Mech. Technically, that's a legacy set, not part of the island wave but lego sent all of this to us we're going to do it all in one big review and this is all getting released at the same time anyways so might as well just keep it all in there but we're going to start off of course with the four island sets and i think we're going to start off reviewing the big one first Alrighty, we're starting off with the catamaran sea battle first let's knock out some of the logistics this is set number 71748 sells for $70 US, uh, 780 parts total, comes with six minifigs, and that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna check out the minifigures. Alrighty, here is Kai. He's got some nice, almost not standard, but I like that it kind of almost goes back to an earlier year of Ninjago with just a bit of extra detail. That's how I sort of imagine his ninja robes looking, at least compared to some of the more recent seasons. Uh, nice looking hairpiece. Let's take off all the extra bits. He's got a determined face with the little uh, bandage above his eye. There's his back print and his other expression. So you can just see everything. Pretty good looking dude. And now we've got a J that's also got the same kinds of robes with a little bit of extra tactical detailing. If you can see that some extra belts there that show equipment and stuff like that. Uh, you really can't see the full thing until I take the pieces off, but let me just show you that he's also got a golden machete there at the end of the chain. Now here he is less than happy and kind of happy, but you can see all of that tactical detailing cutting across his main robes on the back and the front. Now I've always liked Zane because he's a little bit more rigid and his color combination is a little bit less flashy and vibrant. He's got the white and the flat silver with the flat top and just a little bit of light blue detailing, which is generally the look for him. He's got a pretty nice uh, set of prints that you can see fully right now. And Zane's only expression is his angry face, as you can see here. Uh, he doesn't ever get to look happy as a minifigure for this wave. Now we're looking at Chief Mammatus. He's, uh, he's only in this set and the other really big one, so he's a little bit more difficult to get. But then again, it's kind of the same thing with um, Kai and Jay in terms of uh, them only being in the two biggest, most expensive sets. But look at all of that molding. His crown is really quite, quite awesome. Uh, really intricate little print right there, right in the center. Uh, you can add those little tooth pieces, which is nice, which means you could also add different pieces to this uh, mold if you wanted to later down the line. This is that little emblem. The every This comes out, I think, in every set. Yeah, I think every single one for the Island Wave has that piece. But let's check out this guy. Actually, right before we take off all the parts, this is dark orange for a soft cloth cape, which I don't think has come out in this color before until this way but let's take off all the pieces now the color combination is pretty striking here the gold is pretty much the primary while well, you have a little bit of that teal as the secondary and the dark orange has a way of really interacting quite well i think with the gold he's got a couple of different expressions and he's a pretty rock solid villainous looking character here is rumble keeper he's got the standard body print that you'll see on a lot of the bad dudes and let me put the spear in his hand in a way that allows him to spin around there you go you can see he's got some basic almost bamboo armor i think that makes up his torso print and let's actually make it so you can see his full print i honestly like his face print a little bit more than chief mammatus here and just the simple dark purple sort of electrical details i think work really well for this bad guy he appears in one other set and this uh, shield also appears um, in a set that he doesn't appear in. So it's a kind of common piece, but it's a really excellent looking shield in general. I love the detailing. It really pops quite well against the dark tan. Let's move on to the last guy. The Thunderkeeper is in fact the most common minifigure from this wave. He appears in three sets. So uh, the main thing about him, of course, is of course the mold for his head. It's got that nice 
uh, streak long pointy bit that kind of matches up in a few different layers of uh, metal it looks like. It's sort of the impression I get here. And then it's a very long uh, complete face, neck, chest cover with a really intimidating, really mean looking uh, sort of monstrous looking face in the front. He's also got a very intentionally looking malevolent evil face where he's taking pleasure in doing bad things, I suppose. That's sort of the impression I get from this bad guy. And now let's jump back to the set. All right, let's now go straight into the big build. This is the big old catamaran. I love this sail piece. This is a very large, not vinyl. This is actually a cloth, a not soft cloth. This is the sort of papery cloth uh, piece that we have that makes up the main sail. The graphic is great. The stitching for it is awesome. I like that there's, well, I knocked his little spear out of his hand. I like that there's all these little holes put into the actual sail cloth there. That's a really, really nice touch. Um, and certainly later down the line, a piece like this could eventually become, I think, a pretty uh, difficult one to try to acquire, especially on the secondhand market for like custom builds. There's a few pieces like that on uh, in general in this area that we're getting here in colors that are not so common and may not end up appearing too much later down the line, but that still technically remains to be seen. There's some sticker detailing, as you can see. Uh, it's really just this main piece here and a couple of the slopes. Generally, I think it only helps the aesthetic of this model. There's a little bit more sticker detailing there. It's really not that heavy. It's really just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stickers, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, there's a couple more on the other catamaran, but we'll get there in a second. Now the main, main feature of this model is not the folding bone, uh, like I guess attack or ramming function. Uh, you have these nice bony blades that shoot out like that. They kind of clip into place in the back. It's a pretty solid looking function. You have the ratcheted joints that match up with the clips. So they'll snap into place, but there really isn't a ton of resistance, which is in general, a function that I like. Generally, I like keeping it out. It feels a little bit more pointy, but this is the main function here. Oh, there we go. Let's try not to knock everything over when I do it. You can unpin both of the pontoons on either side, and now you've got your own little water vehicles that can be operated individually, which is a great touch. They've got their own little, uh, little fins in the back and their own propulsion, or at least it looks like that anyways. And then they say when you do that, you're supposed to kind of put the little fins out on either side to make it look a little bit more aerodynamic, water dynamic, hydro type dynamic. Is that, is that the word, the proper term? Um, I don't know exactly, but that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to fold these little sides out. Maybe, maybe this little ramming function has something to do with that transformation. Uh, generally, it's just kind of fun to play with it regardless. Oh, that actually happens sometimes. This gets caught on it. Let's see if I can get it back in there without too much of an issue. This sometimes gets caught if I can push it back in on a little brick that when you pull it back, it'll get caught on like one of these little corners here. It's not really an issue. Um, and all right, what else for this catamaran? There's just really the last thing, which is the spring loaded feature. You push down and you can shoot out a couple of purple shots and take out the good guys. But let's move on over to the good guys because this is actually, I think my favorite single build from the entire wave. This is Jay's catamaran. I think that, I don't know if it's got a special name, but check this out, boom. It's a really simple, not too much of a transformation, but it really does make a big difference on how this vehicle looks. So it's a bit more wide and a little bit more like the attack position, right? That's what I would call it. And then this is the fast moving position. It's a little bit sleeker, more well contained. I like that these sticker details, when you pull them out, they actually kind of create a solid red line that matches up super well. I really like how they did that. And I also think that this flag piece, it's fire. No pun intended. No, it's a really good piece. Um, it's a little bit of ratcheted movement here. There isn't really a ton that you can actually move around on this model. There's this single function. You've got the little rotation blades in the back. And of course, Jay can sit down here. You have to push his sword out 
you see that his katana doesn't actually go all the way back if you sit him down. So that is, but it's not a big deal. But that was something I noticed as a criticism, I guess. Uh, it's, it's not a perfect fit if you have the sword in there, but it's still a pretty solid vehicle. And uh, it's a really fun bit of construction, especially when you look at the bottom, you can kind of see how that connection works, how this is attached. There's like sort of a fulcrum in the middle and these little nodes are ending up attaching to the back arms of the Technic lift arms. And that's what does the function. Really simple, really easy to put together, but a very effective and cool looking transformation feature. I just think the colors are good. The shape is good. This is a fun build too, don't get me wrong. The functions are like way more involved and there's just a lot more you can do with this. The fact that uh, you can transform it into three very passable looking vehicles. Not all the time when you break down a large vehicle to turn into smaller ones does it look great, but I actually think this one works pretty well, uh, all things considered. So. Interesting, right? We've got battle boats, battle catamarans as a featured theme for this uh, season 14. And I think they did a pretty good job passing these off as fun fighting vehicles. But of course, I would like to know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's move on. Next up is the Keeper's Village set, set number 71747. A lot of sevens in there. It is 50 US dollars, 632 parts. And it comes with these five minifigures. First things first, minifigures. Let's check them out real quick. So here is Kai again, Island Kai. Uh, I should have said that for the last set, but all these guys are Island Jays, Island Kais. Um, he's exactly the same as the other set from the Catamaran Sea Battle. So um, Lego knows that people like Kais, so they only included him in the two most expensive sets. He's exactly the same as the last guy, so I'm not gonna bother taking off his other pieces and the same thing, the exact same thing goes for Jay. He was uh, available in the Catamaran Sea Battle and this one. So he's also gonna be a little bit more difficult to get, but they know that Kai and Jay, well, and Lloyd are also pretty darn um, sought after. So they're a little bit harder to get. I think it would have been nicer to split these guys up into maybe one or two of the cheaper, smaller sets, but that's not the case. And now let's move on to an actually new figure and the only figure that is exclusive to this set. And he only comes, Cole only comes out, Island Cole only comes out in this set and no other sets for this wave. All right, I just turned the light up a bit so you could see him slightly better against the black backdrop, but he's got some pretty darn good detailings. The hair mold in particular, I think, works really well for him. And of course, the armor print on his chest actually pops particularly well. It's not necessarily robe detailing like some of the other guys, but instead it's armor detailing. Here is the figure on his own without any of his extra pieces. Really good looking prints though for the front and back of the torso. Really solid looking Cole. And I have a feeling he's gonna be a little bit more sought after compared to some of the other figs because you can only get them in this one still pretty expensive set. Here's another Chief Mammatus, just like the Catamaran Sea Battle. He's exactly the same as the other guy. You can only get him in the two biggest, most uh, difficult to get sets, I suppose, in terms of finances. Uh, really good looking mold though. I still absolutely love the way this villain looks in the long run. And then we've got another Thunderkeeper, same exact figure. So if you wanna see the full face prints and stuff, just check out the first rotation of mini figures again, but there he is. He's the same guy as the original. All right, before I jump into the review, full disclosure, I just did wanna say very quickly that uh, while transporting this build from my house to the studio, which is not the same place, uh, it did get dropped onto the concrete and most of the island shattered into a lot of tiny, tiny pieces. Um, so if you see one or two gnarled or scratched pieces, that's because I literally just dropped this onto the ground right before doing the review. So hopefully I put it back together all right, all the same way. Uh, but yeah, word for the wise, don't drop your Lego sets onto the concrete. There you go. So you learned something today. All right, let's jump into the island. Looks great. As a solid piece, it's got a lot of different varied levels. This is really tall and thin, the main little tiki bad guy here. Uh, we've got a really cool, interesting, colorful lava dragon face cave. This build for the dragon face is better than like 
half the Ninjago dragons out there, which is actually kind of funny. And then you've got the lower level, which is the sand and ocean, and then an allusion to a larger jungle. So you've got a ton of stuff, a curving stairway, a popping out spear, but that's basically it for the island. And then I think it looks excellent as you open it up. And this is a great feature in general uh, that I think the design team did a great job with. The fact that you can open up this area by a huge amount of degrees, but also there's no right angles. See this? There's nothing that looks really boxy or strange when you open up the island. This looks like it could be a perfectly normal or intentional way to display the model. Uh, and that's because you don't have any weird right angles matching up with each other. Really good design choice from the team. Uh, now this is a clipped on area that is intentionally made to break away a little bit easier so you can have kind of a separate more spread out area of play. We'll get to that at the end. Let's focus on the main island which is connected. This is a larger hinge. You're not supposed to be able to break these two areas off unless of course you drop it on the concrete. Um, let's try not to break off like all of the stones all at the same time. Generally speaking you want to have your model all together and all right let's check out the little prison first this is a little bone and wood gate that keeps somebody locked inside the cave if that's what you want to do this is the cool function though this little hidden leaf function connects to a lift arm and gravity basically does all the work but let's see if i can turn it around without breaking a bunch of pieces off there we go so not only does it make a chomping function for the mouth but it opens up and reveals uh, a hidden entrance or exit to the little prison behind the cave, which is really cool. This is a great function. This head looks better than like half of all the Ninjago dragon heads out there, which is funny because it's really just supposed to be a stone construction, but it's actually a great looking uh, bit of building. So that's a great little area right here. There's another little fire on top of it, but let's not get into that. I would like to show off this guy. Here is the boss battle, essentially. Uh, we've got three separatable little baddies, if I can move the island back. These guys all connect pretty easily to each other. There's just a little uh, axle piece that connects any of them, and they can all stack on top of each other. And uh, these are who you run into and have to fight in the island, I presume. I'm not actually super familiar with a lot of the Ninjago storyline. Personally, I just like the building. This is a really interesting, sort of fun little bad guy. They all can connect here and there's a little bit of motion to them. I actually like that it's not perfectly straight up. This makes a lot more sense if they're leaned to one side or the other. And then moving over here, this is the area. This is, I like that you get an extra shield little extra staff piece, you can give it to the minifigures if you want. You've got a wonderful build for a throne. Little sticker detailing, some tooth and bone arms sticking out the back, another little sticker, and uh, he fits in nice and easy. And then a wonderful build for a staircase. It's actually only connected there at the top. This bottom bit is not connected, but there's some tiles and stuff that match up and make sure that you're not gonna accidentally push it too far down and break all the stairs off. Generally speaking, cool, solid island build. Um, and I really just like the fact that it can open up and transform a little bit better than some of the earlier designs, I think, land designs, I should say. And now, we're moving on to the flat area, which has a new piece, at least a piece that I've never seen before. Um, some people, sometimes I see a piece that I think is new and it's either really old or it's a piece that like came out a season before that I didn't encounter, but we've got this little uh, axle that you can push in the back and it's a rapid fire three shot tile, round tile shooter. You see that? It shot out, if I can find one of them. I actually couldn't find any of them. I just went into the bag of spare parts, but it shot out some of these trans purple tiles here and they all stack on the inside. So you can shoot three out at a time really, really quickly. So there you can see the tiles are all loaded into this piece. It's locked in place pretty good. It doesn't really have a ton of posability here, uh, but there is a little bit of a 
sort of like a catapult style function to give you an idea of what I mean. All you do is do that. You can have just a little kind of knockover function there. And then this tree is actually something that I have not set up the booby trap for. There's an inkwell piece right underneath there, so it's not studded in quite the same way. Oh, it's not studded in quite the same way. So when you have it in there and then you hit this little lever, it kind of gives you a little bit of extra, extra mechanical advantage. You can kind of fling it up and, and knock over. So there's a couple of booby traps in this area as well. You've got the skull and the teeth, of course, that give off a little bit more detailing. And when you move this jungle leaf out of the way, you can actually see a little bit of a warning sign, I suppose, if that's what you want to call it. And that's what's, of course, revealing the, the shooter right there. It's a perfect lane for getting hit with the booby trap. So this is a little bit more of the treacherous introduction to the island. Let me try not to break off all of the leaves as I talk about it. But yeah, there's a lot here. There's two different booby traps and uh, just some extra detailing. I also like that you get a brown flexi tube here as a thin little tree. That's just a fun extra piece to have from here. So all in all, this land build works really well. It's a very big departure compared to the other temple or fortress based builds that you normally get from Ninjago. I mean, it's not like we've never gotten something similar to this in a Ninjago set, but it is generally quite different, which I do like. Also, people will be remiss to say if I forget to mention, there's also a barrel with like fish and some food in there. That's that's part of the set too. You can put it somewhere you can cook over the fire, perhaps in the back in the cave. But anyways, that's basically it for this set. And let's move on to the jungle dragon. This is set number 71746. It is $40, has 506 parts, comes with four minifigures and minifigures. All right, here's the first time we get to see Lloyd. I like that he comes out in more accessible sets because he is the most popular ninja, I think by far, and excellent detailing. I really like the hair mold. He's got a lot of uh, hair that crosses over the green headband that looks very organic and very easy and natural in terms of a mold. So I like that it looks so good here. Uh, and let's check out some of those prints as well because they're, they deserve a closer look. Lloyd has got a tactical belt that straps around him plus a utility belt as well. I like the green feathers as a little bit of a detail on top of that. And uh, yeah, just really good looking. I do like the island prints a lot. He's the only one with face paint too which uh, I think looks good. I think it would have been cool for more of the ninjas to have cool markings like this, but only Lloyd gets them. Solid looking fig though. I'm sure the bone he's holding, by the way, has absolutely nothing to do with the jungle dragon. And now let's move on to Zane. He is the same Zane as we saw from the catamaran sea battle. Nothing different about him. He's just Zane. Now you can see him a little bit less overexposed. Still a solid looking fig. Uh, I like that you can get him in a couple of sets. He's a little bit more accessible compared to Cole or Nia. And now we're moving on to my favorite character from the bad guys, or I should really just say minifigure. I don't really know much about the character. This is Polaric. And it's such a simple idea. Put two minifigure heads on top of each other and they're covered with just a little uh, ninja face scarf, but they could have done it with like a beard or they could have done it with a series of uh, different pieces. And it's just an interesting, funny sort of concept for a bad guy. There's a lot of tiki and totem imagery and symbolism in this, in this entire island wave. I do think that they're sort of pulling from Polynesian culture in general, just because that's, I think, a little bit easy for younger kids to recognize as being sort of island-like culture. So you have a literal tiki bad guy head, which is funny. It's the face prints are... Uh, Thunder Keeper and Rumble Keeper, I believe, just stacked on top of each other. There's nothing unique in terms of the pieces that makes up this bad guy. He's just a unique looking bad guy. Uh, and so that's just kind of fun. Um, he's definitely a much more interesting, fun uh, bad dude to get. And then we get our third Thunder Keeper. Excellent guy still. I absolutely love the print for the mask. Um, it's definitely a good guy to get. Um, 
But yeah, he's, he's pretty darn common now. He's been in all of the sets that we've reviewed so far, and let's move on to the actual set itself. All right, let's do it. This dragon has got, I think, well, there's a lot of things to it that I think work pretty well. Uh, I like that they made the tail not move up and down, just side to side. It gives it a little bit more of an organic feel. They've done this with a few different body parts or dragon parts, I should say, over the years. Generally, this is an aesthetic that I prefer over the ball jointed dragon. And uh, it's a pretty easy construction. You can see there's a lot of just axle pieces that have been uh, put onto those little modified two by two plates that all sort of pin together. Generally, it's a nice construction, but I also really enjoy that the belly has this built in arch where it kind of looks like the back is always arching back a little bit. In general, this makes the whole creature feel a little bit more alive or ready or there's there's just a little bit more energy to the body stance in general and they just fixed that in place you can have the dragon standing up on his hind legs i kind of like the look of the dragon when he's doing when he's doing something like this i actually think that looks pretty good uh this is a pretty common build style for the head that we've had before obviously the pieces here haven't been done in these colors or with these prints but we have basically had uh, builds for heads like this in the past with the droid arms that end up connecting the jaw. So it can kind of come forward and back, open really wide if you really wanted to. The built-in tongue is a little bit different this time around. It's kind of a fun construction. Makes them look a little bit goofy, especially with the big, wide, sort of wily looking eyes. But uh, yeah, definitely makes for a different kind of looking dragon, which I think works quite well. In general, the build construction for the legs and arms, pretty solid. Pretty rock solid, very colorful. We have these classic sort of feet and toe claw uh, builds that we've seen a bunch of times before. Nothing very exciting, of course, on the belly, just some understuds. That is basically the dragon, but it's pretty good. It's actually a pretty solid build. I haven't accidentally broken anything off yet. Also, I almost forgot the wings. So the wings are kind of they want you to have them sort of locked back like this as sort of a standard position, but you can, with a little bit of playing, you can get them to kind of come out like sort of normal looking flappy dragon wings, but it's really just an impression, uh, an impression of wings. There's no connection or there's no tissue or, or any feathers or anything that could actually get this thing really in the air. They're more just like cool looking blades that give you the idea that this is a winged dragon. Very interesting though. A little bit of sticker detailing, by the way. I mean, people kind of get remit, they kind of get like, hey, you forgot to mention it. Not, sometimes I don't forget to mention things. It's just, there are little details here and there. Uh, if you take the seat off, you can actually see the stickers a little bit better. I also like that recently Ninjago dragons, actually any kind of animal creature that's being ridden with a satchel or with a, with a saddle, I should say, that you can take it on and off really, really easily. Cool looking, cool looking dragon. Let's move on. Here is uh, Zane's little flyer. I really like the detail. Look, they've managed to put a bit of uh, chrome gold, not chrome, but the, the sort of shiny sprayed on reflective gold here, which is a cool touch. You can have a little bit in terms of uh, that little quarter round tile piece couple of stud guns on either side. A really excellent build for a sail. You even have a bit of a little emblem there and Zane can stand right in the center. Uh, little builds like this, little flyer builds like this that are nice and sleek and easy to swoosh around are always fun. These are some of my favorite kinds of Lego builds. And uh, it's nice to see that, that they did a good job with this little one. I really like the little builds here. It's simple, it's... Uh, also, this is the first time I've personally encountered this piece, but I know it's been out in several other sets. It's kind of like the tall binocular. I don't know the name of this. Ooh, let's see if, uh, there we go, that was coming apart. But it's a cool looking, it's a cool looking piece. And I'm glad that Lego has included it because I has never encountered it until right now. So anyways, uh, yeah, generally I'm happy with the flyers, but I'm a little bit biased. I usually like small, sleek little Cool technical builds like this, whether it's a flyer or a bike or something like that. Long story short, the build for the dragon is pretty darn acceptable. I really like the color combination. Uh, this is a somewhat unique minifigure, which I'm a fan of, even though he doesn't really have any unique parts. 
And uh, there is the Jungle Dragon. Let's move on to Lloyd's Jungle Chopper. So here's your quick and dirty small vehicle set for the Wave. Lloyd's Jungle Chopper 71745. It sells for 20 bucks, 183 parts, comes with three figs. And let's jump into the figs first. All right, here is Lloyd. This makes sense that he, of course, would be included in this set. I like that he's included in the cheapest set of the Wave. He is the most popular ninja, so that's pretty cool. He is the same as the last Lloyd that we saw in the in the Jungle Dragon. So there's nothing really different about this guy. Uh, pretty good looking figure though. I think he probably has some of the best detailing and that probably wasn't uh, unintentional, I think, on the design team's part. Now this is the only set where you can get Island Nia. So this detailing only comes out for one version of this figure and it's this figure here. So that's kind of cool that she's a little bit more rare. It's the same thing for Cole, but she comes out in the cheapest set. So she'll be a little bit more acquirable in terms of long-term collectability. Love that contrast of the blue layering. Let me actually take off some of these pieces. And there's something here that I just think works so well with that uh, layering that we have for the blue highlights that cuts across uh, the front and a little bit on the back by the shoulders. That fine white line detailing also is a really excellent little touch for this character. The expressions are nice. And now let's move on to the last guy. Rumble Keeper is the same Rumble Keeper that we saw in the Catamaran Sea Battle. Exact same minifigure. Still, the details are pretty darn excellent. And let's jump into the set. All right, so here is the model in its completeness. Love the detailing for the small sail. In general, I do think the dark green and the sand green complement each other really well with the gold accent highlights. Uh, the main bit of construction, or I suppose function, is the fact that there's a little bit of shock detailing there. It's not really much. You've just got these uh, one by two little rubber axle pieces that like to squish around with each other. And that's basically it. That's what keeps the resistance there. So when you're riding it around, it can bounce up and down just a little bit. But the actual shape of the model is pretty good. It's kind of funny that this roll cage is much lower than Lloyd's head, actually. So I feel like the, this cage is meant to make sure that you don't hit your head if this thing flips over. But uh, anyways, that's, I mean, that's the basic construction right there. It's got these kind of um, warthog-like tusks in the front. Obviously, the bigger wheel in the back gives it a much meaner, more aggressive look and also Ninjago loves these pieces. They will never stop putting these big, long, sleek um, blades in their models to kind of give an extra bit of um, almost uh, aggressive uh, lines and nice streaky details that cut across each of their builds. They, these are in so many of their models and for good reason. They look really cool when you've got them set up there. Um, yeah, aside from that, it's a pretty basic construction, very solid. Uh, you don't really break too many of these pieces off when you're playing around with it. Uh, my nephew certainly likes this model for sure. And uh, that is going to be it for the Island Wave review, but let's check out the little foreign up legacy set. This is kind of a strange set because usually legacy sets uh, revisit popular ones for slightly older Ninjago fans. And this is not geared for the older Ninjago fans. It's just kind of, I think, a fun set for the designers to revisit. Um, it's not a bad looking mech, honestly, uh, for what it is. But when you get a closer look, you'll see that it's mostly made of like a few really large pieces that are very unique and very specialized for it, because that's generally how junior sets go. First, let's jump, oh wait, hold on. Before we jump into the actual set, let me just first say it's 71740, 106 parts, two minifigure sells for $19.99. Now let's jump into the fix. Here is Jay, he's got his updated legacy printing, not bad looking at all. Um, he's also got a cowl piece that's very easy to take on and put off, which is of course a uh, put on and take off. Is that, did I say that right? Doesn't matter. Uh, it's a solid piece, which is easier for younger builders to handle, which is also pretty nice. Here is Izor. Not the first time we've also gotten this version of an updated Izor, but the prints are still pretty darn excellent. I personally love that little snake tattoo that comes across the side of his face. And uh, there he is. So pretty good looking figs. I actually think he looks a little bit nicer 
than J when you've got them side by side. But that's just my personal opinion. Let's jump into the set. Alrighty, so here's the mech. It's kind of funny because it's hard to say if this is uh, an improvement or not based on the original design from 2015. This is clearly very simple, but there is a kind of charm to the beefy bulkiness of this uh, sort of mech walker. You do have some nice prints here. Of course, junior sets don't have any stickers. And this whole torso is one large piece with just a couple of bricks put onto the inside. Some nice large uh, shoulder armor pieces put there on the top. Very simple mixel connection, super, super strong, obviously. He's got a blade here in the front, a spinning blade on the other side, nothing that shoots off or gets lost. And then the legs themselves are in ratcheted joints and you can't really, I mean, you can't really make a walking pose. He pretty much just has to stand. You can lean him forward on one ratcheted position there, barely standing. And let's try if he can lean back. Yeah, he can lean back probably just by one point. Generally speaking, uh, the ratcheted joints almost are meaningless here just because there's very little you can actually do with the fact that the legs can move around. It's really not a poseable figure outside of uh, the arms being able to move around. It's kind of funny too how Jay just stands there. I mean, it doesn't really get easier uh, in terms of a function to get a minifigure in and out, but it doesn't really look like he's just standing there. Anyways, that's this function. Also, there's a slightly different kind of spring-loaded shot. It's a, it's a heavy one, but it looks a little different from the previous heavy cannons. Personally, I have not encountered this until building this set, but you push on the red button, Hey, and it knocks it over, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you only get one shot, there's no spares, which is kind of a bummer, but not bad. And then this is sort of a Flintstones car. <laughs> I mean, this is basically a Flintstones car right there without it actually being the official idea's Flintstones car itself. So you get a couple of little tiny pieces here. It's a little rock with a spider, a little rock or grass with a scorpion, one of the daggers, and then another dagger in this little island piece. So if you want to arm Jay, this is how you do it. And that's the set. Alrighty, so now that we've done the reviews and these are all magically back in the exact same position as the intro shot, let me give you some final thoughts. Uh, my favorite build is definitely Kai's Catamaran. I think it's just got the sleekest look to it. It's just a little bit sharper. The folding function for the, the side pontoons coming out is I think the best thing for me as a single build. The dragons in general just keep getting better from Ninjago. The jungle dragon here is definitely going to contrast really well color-wise, if anything else, uh, compared to the other Ninjago dragons, which is great. Uh, factoid here, uh, Nia and Cole are the two most rare of the figs from this wave, really. There's a lot of repeats for the bad guys, as you saw. Uh, there's doubles of Kai's, Lloyd's, and Jay's, but only one Cole, one Nia, this is the second most expensive set, so that means this Cole is going to be maybe the most collectible, maybe the most expensive long-term minifigure if you're looking into the collectability of any of these sets or figs. Uh, that's generally my notes about the wave. Um, I'm definitely satisfied that LEGO is playing around with just more themes for Ninjago. It's season 14 now, so uh, they're still going, they're still playing around. I want them to go to space next time, but I think they did a pretty good job with this sort of uh, seafaring, the island-themed wave. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our content, you can always like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever it is that you want to do, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!